So we are working on the financial decision-making chapter. Okay, financial decision-making chapter. And we are gonna start with about the cash flow. Okay, about cash flow. We had talked previously about liquidity and things like that. And so now we're gonna start pulling the pieces together. Our first thing is cash flow. Okay. Now, cash flows in two directions. Cash in flow is exactly what it sounds like. Cash in flow sounds exactly like it sounds like. That it's the money you earn. So it's your money in. In flow. Then we have cash outflow. And these are all terms that you got to know for your test and everything. Cash outflow is the money you pay. Okay, so that's your money out. Everybody okay with that? In money in, money you earn, out money out, money you pay. Okay, kind of straightforward. But this all fits into a bigger piece of situation. Okay, this all fits into a bigger piece of situation. This cash inflow and cash outflow. So your cash flow is an important part of your financial plan. Okay. Does that make, because what you're doing with your money, ins versus outs, matters. It dictates how you can do things, ins versus outs. Okay, so we're gonna make a little visual of how the stuff flows. And we're gonna go up to insert, and we're gonna insert, where are the pictures? I want to be inserting like a little box. Where's the insert square and stuff? Is that in a different place? Oh, no, because those are actual photos. You know how you can insert just a square? At least you can in Word. <laughs> it's table. No, oh, but I want to circle sometimes. There's no circle. No, okay. So we're gonna insert a table. It's not as fun. Man, that's dumb. <laughs> okay, so we'll insert a box. We're gonna adjust the box's size though when we're done. Our first box is income. Oops, I gotta spell it right. Now, is our income gonna be an inflow or an outflow? Is our income gonna be an inflow or an outflow? Okay, so income is money in. So it's inflow. Okay. I'm on this side of the box, maybe. Can I go ahead and move the box over? Because I need to move the box over. Did it matter that I had to do that before I put the box on? <laughs> I don't know Google Docs very well. Well, I do and I don't. It works kind of like Word, but it's not like Word all at the same time. Oh, okay, click on the box. I want the little four things to show up, huh? I, I made it smaller. I figured out how to make it smaller. Where's the edge of the box? Okay, this is what makes it it's a teaching moment for everybody. Click on the, oh, you right click on the box. Got it. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, box, work with me. 
that's not, is that what I wanted? Because I need to move it over. Hmm. See, I need to move it over. All right, it's gonna have to be slightly weird. I'm gonna have to put it on this side. Okay, what makes income? What makes income? I wanted to shift it more towards the center. No, in general, in life, what makes income? Where do you get wages from? A job. So I'm gonna put a box above it then, fine. So you have your job. Right? And that job creates the income. Bring this income back. Closer. Come on, Beth. Okay, job makes income. We okay with that? Now, let me see if it gives me a, does it give me a draw feature? Yeah, that's this one, right? No, that's highlight. Where I can use a, my stylus to draw a line. Does it do that? Because that's the highlighter color. That's already a drawing. Maybe. Does this give me a pen to write with? No. Nope. Oh, it does. Okay. We're going to click on the draw feature. Switch over. Because we need to go ahead and we need to be able to have circles. And look, here's circles and squares and stuff. It's in the draw feature. I feel better. Okay, we're starting with a circle. Back up. I'm going to delete the other stuff off in a second. We're starting with our circle. In the circle, we put a text box. Too big. Oof. If you're hand drawing it, you're going to put a circle. And in the circle, you're going to do the same as we put in our text box. Okay. In this text box, we're going to write where our income comes from. Okay, so where did our income come from? Our job. Okay. Then our job links to that income. Much easier. This is what I wanted. See, we just have to play with it. Our job links to that income. So an income was our money in, so it is an inflow. All right. Now, what happens though, is from that money in, we do some stuff. We do some stuff. We do quite a few stuff, actually. Circle. We're gonna make it bigger. And I'm gonna kind of make it oval on purpose. Text box. New text box over here. And then I'll type it in and then I'll move it. That income, that inflow is your cash, your cash, okay? I'm gonna move it over, don't worry. Okay, that's your cash. And we do multiple things with our cash. First thing we do 
is we do spending of our cash. I wish it wouldn't come out to be so gigantic right away. It makes it tricky. We do spending with our cash first. Okay. And our spending, I don't have to put the text box in the circles. It automatically lets me. Cool. I'll do that on the next one. <laughs> our first thing we do spending on is our everyday life. Okay. We do spending on products. Oh, cool. Thank you. And services. Okay, I'm gonna stretch them a little bit. Products and services. These products and services are our bills and expenses. Okay. Wish I knew the settings for the, tell it to not be get such a gigantic text box right away. Our bills and expenses. All right, so that's our first thing we always do with our money. We pay our bills. What happened to my income box? Oh, because I made it a text box. I got to put its lines around it, huh? I want it, the lines to show up. Mm. No. Where's the lines? Maybe I'll put a box in instead of a text box. I don't know. Because I want the lines around the text box. I should just pick box, huh? Can I pick the box after and have it work or is it going to cover it up? I could always do it a cheaty way. Make the box and put the text box on it and leave it, huh? Or just type it, type it. Again. Ignore. I'm going to move this up there because I like it better. I want the line showing. I don't need you anymore, text box. Be gone. Okay. Because it's kind of a flow chart thing and it needs its boxes. I don't need the box around spending. I don't need the box around bills next. I need the box on the main things. Okay, so our spending happens first and that's for products and services. That's our bills and expenses. That's our first thing that happens. So let's look at how our income, our flow goes. Step one, we get money. Okay, this is our step one, our money. We do some spending, we pay for bills and services. And then from the bills and services we have, from, the, from our cash, we have different things that we do. So after we do our regular spending, we have money that's gonna be left over in our cash. That's what it means by cash. Cash is your extra after you've paid for your daily life, okay? After you've paid for your daily life, you have cash, okay? And the cash is gonna be split into some different things. Okay, first thing after we're done paying our bills, we have our liquidity that happens. We talked about liquidity last chapter. Okay, we talked about liquidity last chapter. And we're going to be putting in what some of this liquidity means. Okay. Don't need them so gigantic. Liquidity is part two. Okay. In the liquidity, we have our, we are doing a text box now. Deposit in 
I'm going to move it in a second. Deposits, which is the cash in, okay, to our bank account, to our savings account, our money left over, okay. And then we also have our credit out. Okay, so liquidity comes in two components, money that's going in and money that's coming out. Okay, liquidity is two things, money in, credit is out. Okay, so let me get my text box for the credit out. Credit out. Credit is your money out. Now, what do we mean by credit? We had a couple different types of credit that we talked about already. What does that mean when we say the word credit? There's multiple kinds. When we say credit, that word means more than credit cards. What else does credit mean? More than just credit cards, what does credit mean? Not just credit cards, what does credit mean? When we say that word credit, it's more than just credit cards. We've talked about other types of credit already. Who remembers what other types of credit already? More than just credit cards. It's money you owe people, what else would you owe people for? Okay, so after we do our daily expenses, that's when our financial plan starts. That's the stick down here. What else are you gonna owe people for than just credit cards? What else are you gonna owe people for? Yes, loan. So every time we see credit, do not automatically think credit card. Think money I owe. It includes your loans and everything. So our financial plan started with our income in. We have to pay for our bills and our expenses and then we get to do stuff with our cash, our financial plan. Step one was the liquidity, okay? Step two, no, step two was the liquidity, okay? Step three, off of liquidity, we now are looking at financing, okay? Financing, that goes along with the credit out piece. Okay, that's why it comes right after credit out. It's our financial decision-making that we were talking about last chapter. Financing is our part three of our financial plan. And that's our credit cards. Our, our credit cards are liquidity. Financing is our loans. Okay, loans for, no, I don't wanna line back up. Undo. Text box. Okay, so when we say financing, we're being super specific about our liquidity. We're being super specific about the type of credit. We are talking about our loans. And for the most part, those are for the home and the car. Those are the two biggies, right? That we already talked about, our, our, our homes and our cars. Those are the major loans that we have. 
Okay, that's that stick, the loans. Can you swivel a box? I can, right? Oh, cool. See, I'm learning this stuff. Maybe I'll make the font smaller so then it will fit. That might work too, huh? Font size 12. Then I can make it a little smaller. Not that small. There. Okay. So we had our job. It created the inflow, our cash. Our first thing we did with our cash was to pay our daily bills. Okay. And then from our daily bills, we then can start the plan that we talked about last chapter, the financial plan. And the financial plan starts with our liquidity. Starts with our liquidity. From liquidity, it moves into our financing options. Okay. After our financing options, it's our protecting our income. So this is just kind of refreshing in a visual way, what we talked about last chapter, the financial plan, okay? So we have to protect our income. That's our step three. This is the stuff that was on yesterday's test about the different kind of components on the financial plan. Oh, it'll be four. You're correct. Thank you. Okay, that one's four. Now, in that protecting income that we learned about last chapter, we have our insurances. Okay. Insurance comes now. I'll fix it in a minute. Okay. And insurance is a money out. And I have forgot to say about the loans, our money technically out. Okay. Money insurance kind of goes in and out, but I mean, the money that in loans go kind of in and out, but predominantly loans are considered out because they're in a liability. They're money against your, um, you know, because you have to pay off. You have to pay for it in the long run. It doesn't come for free. You might get the loan, yes, but after you've gotten the loan, you have to pay it back. So in order to pay it back, that's money out. So we need to put that in this box with our loan. That's a money out situation. Okay. Our liquidity goes both directions. In deposits in, credit out. But our loans end up being an out because we have to pay them back. And our insurance is out because you, know, you have to pay the premiums to get the protection that's not free, okay? Then we have our fifth step in our financial plan that we talked about last chapter. Nope, line first. Trying to make room for our last piece because there's a sixth step, okay? Our fifth piece in our financial plan that we talked about last chapter was the investing. Investing. Now investing, our step five, we can use a couple different methods to invest. The main ones are stocks and bonds. 
Okay. Okay, the main ones are stocks and bonds. And those are actually money in because they earn you income, okay? They earn you income. So they are considered a money in because they earn you income. Hmm. Trickier than it looks, doesn't it? That'll do. Okay, and then we have our last piece, which was our retirement and estate planning. Okay. Our retirement and our estate planning box is here. Thank you. Retirement and estate I can planning. I'll fix the box in a second. Retirement and estate plan. Last piece of the financial plan that we talked about the entire of last chapter. Okay, now our re retirement and estate plan has parts to it as well. Okay, our retirement and our estate plan has parts to it as well. And the main part is the investing. The main part is the investing, okay? So you take some of your money and you invest it towards retirement and you take some of your money and you invest it towards life, okay? Not all of the investing you do is geared to fund your retirement. Some of it is geared to fund your retirement, but not all of it. So this is a retirement investment, not the general investing that was mentioned back in step five. Okay. We're talking about retirement investing, investing with the intent that it's going to sit there for a long time and wait until you use it once you retire. Okay, so that's the visual of our financial plan. And we're gonna save it and close it. And there it is, and I can take this one off. I don't need you anymore, so how can I get rid of you? Like that, okay? So that was all of what we learned in chapters, chapter two, all of these little components we talked about in chapter two. And I don't need this anymore either. Because we figured out how to do it the right way. Those are all the components we talked about in chapter two. Okay, now we're on to chapter three now. Okay, so chapter three, you have some plans you have to put into place. Okay, and they are talked about at the end of chapter two. You need to have a plan for all of the following things, okay? First thing, managing your income. Okay, oh, I'm gonna go over here because I wanted something over on this side. There are types of decisions you make based on decisions, what it is. You're managing your income. And so the types of decisions you would make are what expenses should you plan for? I'm going to take this back a little bit. What expenses should you plan for? Okay. That's part of what you're gonna ask. Um, you are gonna ask, um, how much money should you save? That's not much, much. 
I'm going to move it over in a second. How much money should you save? That's the next thing. Stop that. Sometimes formatting is very irritating. Got it. How much money should you save? That's something you need to ask yourself when you're making decisions. Okay. Um, now let's save each month. Okay, how much money should you save each month? How much money should you plan for each month? Let's add those in. I'm gonna have to fix the formatting, it's okay. And we kind of talked about these a little bit last chapter. Little one. Um, <laughs> how much money should you save towards special products, special purchases? How much money to save for special purchases? What would be one of our special purchases we have to worry about in our lifetime? What's something that's a special purchase that we need to worry about saving money for so we're ready for it when the time comes? What is a big purchase that you should be planning for so you're ready when the time comes? Come on, what's a big purchase that you need to plan for? We know of at least two that are really big ones that most people plan for, the car and the house, okay? Now, are there other big purchases that happen in our lifetime? Yes, maybe, um, like I said with my SMART goal, um, I wanted to replace the flooring in my house. So you have to save for that special big purchase, okay? You can't just depend that you have the credit available when you need it. So you might need to be deferring some of your, your, um, your big purchases you want so that you have saved up for it so that it's not impacting your liquidity, okay? Last big thing we have to worry about, um, decisions you're making as your um, um, going through your daily plan and figuring out your plan is what debt payments must you plan for each month? That's about the liquidity piece. How much are you gonna to have to pay off on that credit card? And how much are you gonna do it? And how quick are you gonna do it? Okay. Right? So that's managing your income piece. Okay, we're gonna go back. The next piece I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about is managing your liquidity. Managing your, I can spell, liquidity. Okay, and there are some questions you have to ask yourself about that. First one is, how much money should you keep in your checking account? Okay. How much money, oops, we should do this the right way. How much money should you keep in your savings account? The basic savings account. Why do we have a basic savings account? What is its purpose? What is its purpose?
that's how our money works for us. But why would we have the savings account versus the checking account? What's the difference? Why do people have a savings and a checking? What are they putting in the savings for? What's its job? Not investing, not a savings account, not retirement, not a savings account. What are we saving for that we know will always happen? It's just when it will happen in our lifetime. We've mentioned it a couple of times, emergencies. So how much are we keeping in our savings account for emergencies? Okay. Letting some people catch up. Okay, because we know emergencies are gonna happen. And then the last big thing in liquidity we're gonna, you ask yourself is, um, no, correction. Should I use, should you use credit for a per purchase or save for it, okay? It matters. Sometimes, yes, you've got, maybe um, you're looking at, um, you want to upgrade your home entertainment system. You want a new TV and you want a new, some stuff. And it's okay to want these things, but do you want to go ahead, should I go ahead and buy that thousand dollar TV and surround sound and blah, 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 right? With credit or should I save up for it or should I do a mix? Okay, so that's part of, that's what that's talking about. Should I totally save for it and be patient? which some of us need to learn to do that. Should I go ahead and um, um, put it on credit, but then I hate paying payments. And if I'm paying payments, then it costs me more because I have to pay interest. It's not that they give me credit for free, right? Um, it's gonna cost me money out of my pocket, okay? They're gonna make charge me interest for it. So that TV that might have been a thousand dollars might end up being fourteen hundred dollars because of the interest on the credit card. Or do I want to do a mix? Maybe I'm putting some on the credit because I want to build a credit history, which is fine. But um, at the same time, um, I don't want to have to pay a lot of extra. So I put it on the credit card. I make extra payments for it, or I saved up some pay part of it in cash and part of it on credit. You know, you have to be balancing these types of decisions. Okay. That's that one. Number three is financing. Financing. It feels weird. Yep. Feels weird. Sometimes words, no matter how you type them, they look and feel weird. It is what it is. All right. So with our financing, that's our loans. That's loans. So questions you would ask yourself in this category and decisions you have to make in this category is how much money should I borrow? for a car purchase or should I lease a car? Um, we will be talking about that leasing a car versus purchasing a car in future chapter. But does anybody know what it means to lease a car? Anybody know what it means to lease a car?
It's kind of a fancy rental. Yeah, you're renting long term is what it is. Um, you don't own the car. You just get to use the car on a long term situation. Um, and because of that, sometimes you end up paying a little bit less because you get to get the newer car. But you're basically doing a fancy long term rental. Okay, that's what leasing is. Versus purchasing where you own it. Leasing, you don't own the vehicle. You're borrowing it. You're renting it long term. Purchasing, you actually own it. Okay. Um, next is the how much money should I borrow for the purchase? of a house. This formatting is killing me, man. Okay. Okay, and when you're looking at that, um, you wanna be looking at how big of a loan payment. Oh yeah, if you lease a car and you total the car, I mean, you have to have insurance on a leased car just like on a regular car. Um, and if, you're, if you total the car, you pay for it. Whatever your insurance doesn't cover, you pay off even if you don't have it. You know, it's just as if you own it, but it's a long-term rental kind of thing. You give it back at the end of the time. Um, how much money do I want to borrow for the purchase of the house and what type and length of loan for the house. Okay, because there's different lengths of time you can take to pay off a house. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You could do 15 year, you could do um, 30 year, and those will affect how big the payment is. Okay. Okay, protecting assets and income. Okay, decisions you have to make to protect assets and income is what type of insurance do I need? That's step one. And how much insurance, how much of, the, of each type of insurance, we'll fix it in a second, do you need? So there are different levels within insurances. So like your, your car insurance, there's different levels you can purchase and each of these levels cost a different amount of money, okay? Um, there's different levels of life insurance you could have 100,000, you could have 500,000, you could have 10,000, there's different levels. So that's what the second question is. How much of each type of insurance do I need? First, I have to figure out what insurances I need. Do I need home insurance? I do if I own a home. Do I need car insurance? I do if I own a car or lease a car or rent a car, okay? Um, if I don't have those, obviously I don't need to purchase those and have that money out of my pocket. For those okay do um health insurance everybody needs health insurance but there are different levels even within health insurance so there's different levels of kaiser there's different levels of blue cross blue shield there's different levels and the different levels cost different amounts of money okay um some families have cancer in their family so there's cancer insurance you can buy in addition to the life, the, um, the um, health insurance, that in the event you get cancer, they pay extra because cancer is super expensive, okay? There's also a type of life insurance related to cancer that if you die of cancer, they pay a different value than if, all right? So there's these different levels and different types and you have to research each one, okay? You have to research each one. Um, investing. Okay, questions and decisions you have to make in investing are, 
how much money should you set aside? There's a fancy word called allocate, but um, towards investing. That's our first step. How much money should I set aside towards investing? Okay. The next thing you have to think about is what type of investments should you have? Okay. So there are stocks, and we'll talk more when we get to that chapter. There are bonds, um, and there are private investing. Okay. Private investing is you have a friend or a relative or someone you know who is starting a business or something like that, and you help them out. You give them some starter money. In exchange for that, they give you income. They give you a percentage of the business. Or So like when you hear some of these company things like um, that, you know, the owner of Amazon, the CEO of Amazon or the founder of Amazon, whatever you want to call it, he actually only owns 41% of Amazon, not the whole thing, because the other part has been sent out and general investors through stocks and stuff have purchased parts of Amazon. And anybody can do that through the stocks, stock market, the ones that are publicly traded. Um, but maybe, um, so he doesn't own the whole thing. He only owns a percent. Um, I know that a friend of mine has a little um, craft business. So I helped her, I gave her some money and she says I own 5% of her little craft business. So as she sells things, she puts 5% of the income away and um, three times a year sends me a little check, okay? So that, that was a private investment because it's just somebody I know and it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Stocks and bonds are the big companies that are on the stock exchange, okay? Bonds tend to be municipals. That's the cities and the states and the school districts and stuff. Governments tend to be bonds, okay? But we're gonna be going more into that when we get to the investing chapter, but I kind of wanted to give you a little idea on it. The last thing investing you've got to look at is how much risk am I willing to take with my money? with the money, okay? How much risk are you, let's keep it all in the same tense, willing to take with the money? Because remember we talked about that there are some companies, if they're new, they don't have a history. They don't have um, a total customer base. They don't have any of that. They're a bigger risk. And because of the bigger risk, the chance of them going out of business is a risk so they will more than likely pay you extra, a higher percent than the companies that are established and have a history. And we know for sure they're not gonna be going out of business because they've been here for a while, okay? Um, investing. Six is your retirement. and estate, okay? There are some questions you have to ask yourself about that. Um, first one is how much money will you need in retirement to live off of, okay? Next thing is, um, how much money, that's not the right word. Each month must you say to have enough, okay? And then How much money 
are you planning to leave the next generation? How much money are you planning to leave behind for your kids and for your husband and for whoever is in your life? Okay. You have to plan for that. It doesn't just happen. It's a plan. Okay. Nothing just happens. It's a plan. I should not see cameras turned off. You guys know that. Thank you for those that are doing the right thing. Okay, and then our last was the communicating. So this is kind of refreshing what we finished up last chapter about. Um, and record. I'll do this way, keeping. That is a space between those. That's fine for capitalized asylum right there. Okay. Questions. Um, where will you store? The records. Okay. So once you have records of, you know, like um, when you buy a house and you pay it off, they give you a deed. They give you a legal document that says you have the right to have that house, that property. Um, that document legal document, super important document, where will you be storing that, okay? Where you, will you be storing the bank account information? Where will you be storing the different physical documents you need to have, okay? Even in this virtual world, there is physical documents you have to keep safe, okay? Where will you be keeping those? Um, where will you keep backup electronic, I'll fix that in a second, files, okay? So a lot of people use computer software to, um, you know, keep track of their bank accounts, keep track of their finances. They use computer software. Where are you gonna be backing up those electronic files? for emergencies, okay? Um, some people store their, um, their important paper documents at a bank in a savings deposit, as a, a savings, a savings deposit box, okay. I just had a blank there for a second. Um, some people actually own safes in their own home. They have a little safe in their own home. I know my mother has a safe in her home. So when we get down to the, we'll be talking about these things like the safe deposit boxes at the bank versus having your own safe versus that'll be part of it, okay? Our last one is on this is who do you need to inform where to find the papers and electronic files. What's this spell? After you die. Okay. Who are you going to make responsible to pull this stuff together after you die? Who are you going to leave in charge of that? Okay. How many people are you going to leave in charge of that? Um, there are some people that they don't want just one person in their life responsible for the financial stuff. Oh yeah, that's exactly what you put in your will. That is, and your will is one of those paper documents that you're gonna now need to make sure you store safely, okay? Not just loose in your home. You wanna put it somewhere where it doesn't, you know, your house burns down, you still have your documents, okay? So um, that's kind of a recap of where we ended last chapter. Each of these is gonna have their own components. Yes, they're gonna have their own chapters that spreads them out and makes them more detailed, okay? So go ahead and turn in your notes. Go ahead and turn in your notes. Done or not, turn in what you have, 
Okay, done or not, turn in what you have. And I'm gonna go over what you are working on for your assignment that is due before 11.59 tonight, okay? Um, but I'm getting it open, one second. You guys go get that turned in, please. Okay, one more minute to get those notes turned in, please. Just hit turn in. If you used my document like you should be, okay, you should not be leaving class because I have not finished what I'm saying. So those that are leaving class are making poor choices. Okay. You are going to be revisiting your SMART goals. And by revisiting, this is what I mean. Okay, you should see that they are popping up on your Google Classroom now. Let me refresh my screen so they're there. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> 